Welcome back to Historical Context. Today we're continuing our series on the American colonies during the English Commonwealth. Today's episode takes us to a surprising place, the colony of Maine. And many listeners would probably wonder why the colony of Maine. Maine wasn't around during the First Continental Congress, Second Continental Congress, and they weren't there during the Constitutional Convention, which is 130 years after what I'm talking about. So why Maine in 1650? Well, we'll talk about it today. You know, up until now, Maine has remained rather enigmatic in colonial history. Like New Hampshire, the colony got started with a series of small outposts and trading posts. So there wasn't a lot going on there. There wasn't a lot of, if any, primary writings or research. These trading posts were set up by other colonists, most of which were in Massachusetts Bay and Plymouth. And if you've been following the podcast for a while, we've done several episodes on both of those colonies prior to this period here, 1640s, 1650s. And there was a lot going on that caused a lot of disruption and even fighting between Massachusetts Bay and Plymouth. But the entire time, the colony of Maine was actually controlled by the patent of Sir Ferdinando Gorgias. In May of 1647, Sir Ferdinando Gorgias dies roughly around the age of 80. And we had talked about him several months ago in the podcast. He held this patent for 25 years. In fact, if you go back to our episode on the founding of New Hampshire, he's very much a presence uh, in that as well. But despite holding the patent for 25 years, he never set foot in the New World. His nephew William Gorgias had come to Plymouth in the 1630s, but was recalled after an altercation with another colonist. In 1649, Thomas Gorgias, nephew of the late Ferdinando, brought three villages together to form the independent province of Maine. Two of the villages, Wells and Kittery, still exist today. Kittery is right across the river from Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and Wells is further north along the eastern seaboard, just south of a popular tourist destination, Kennebunkport. The group elected Edward Godfrey as its first governor. So here's Maine independent province, Governor Edward Godfrey. Finding the original provisional court records have unfortunately for me been unsuccessful, but there's some context floating around out there and the story that I was able to put together is still worth telling. And some of it comes from Massachusetts Bay records. In October of 1649, Maine adopts a law that guarantees religious freedom for all of its colonists. But I was unable to find any primary text as to the bill itself. And I really, really, really want to read that because guaranteeing religious freedom in 1649 had a little bit of a different context than the way we know it today. We know this from other New England laws where they basically said, don't impugn on somebody else's religious worship. But then at the same time, they established standards for blasphemy and other violations. So if anybody out there has or is able to get their hands on that primary text, feel free to pass it along and it might be worth creating an upcoming episode. On uh, October 23rd, 1651, an entry in the Massachusetts Bay General Court shows that there may have been a different claim to the area. Let's have a look. By the extent of the line of our patent, 
it does appear that the town of Kittery and many miles to the northward thereof is comprehended within our grant, and for as much as the court hath been informed that there has been a late endeavor of several persons thereabouts to draw the inhabitants of Kittery, and who govern now by combination to petition the Parliament of England for a grant of the said place. It goes on, which the major part of the inhabitants refuse to do, many of them expressing their willingness rather to submit themselves to the government of the Massachusetts, this court, taking into consideration the premises and how prejudicial it would be to this government if the aforesaid place and river should be possessed by such as are no friends to us, hath ordered that a loving letter and friendly be sent from this court to the said inhabitants of Kettery and acquainting them with our four said right. So let's send them a letter, says Massachusetts Bay, claiming the territory for us. And Massachusetts Bay claims that they have the popular support to do so. In December, Maine's court sends a request to the English Parliament asking them to accept the colony status as independent to Massachusetts. So much for popular support. Meanwhile, in England, Edward Winslow has become a powerful advocate on behalf of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. He argues that Maine's government is allied with the Royalists and cannot be trusted. So he finds a way to drive a wedge in Maine's plans by basically accusing them of being royalists. We don't really have evidence of that, but Sir Gorgeous and his family floating around would probably lay credence to some of that being true. Massachusetts Bay officials enter the Providence of Maine and force its population to submit to them. While accounts vary as to the level of force that was used, it is clear that Massachusetts Bay was not going to tolerate the presence of anyone acting under a different authority than theirs. On May 31, 1652, the Provisional Court in Massachusetts weighs in on the main territory issue. Let's have a look at the writing. Concerning the north line of this jurisdiction, it was this day voted upon our charter that the extent of the line is to be from the north line of our patent, northernmost part of the river Merrimack, and three miles more north where it is to be found, be it a hundred miles more or less from the sea and thence upon a straight line east and west to each sea. So Massachusetts Bay is laying down its claim. Edward Godfrey decided to personally sail back to London to plead for the recognition of the main province. The Massachusetts Bay colony seized and divided Godfrey's estate leaving him with nothing in colonial America. Back in England, Godfrey would find himself living on borrowed money, and he would end up dying a pauper. The Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1652 achieved its expansion and, for the most part, its autonomy. But how long would that last? We'll have to wait to find out, but next week we head to Connecticut to see how the witch trials are going and whether or not the colony is changing anything because of the new government in England. Next time on Historical Context. <laughs>